to make an opening statement again. Josh Kendall's has got a J on his screen. Is that allowed? Uh, T-Rob didn't allow it, but I'll All go right. from there. Would you rather have this? Yeah, Ooh. exactly. Ooh, hand back a little bit. Cleveland would be good. But uh, <laughs> what movie was that? Tootsie. Yeah, that's right. Tootsie. That's a good good call, David. Nice job. What, um, what do I get? That's right. Really uh, very pleased with how our guys competed Saturday night. Uh, I felt like we melted a little bit Tuesday and Wednesday in the heat. It was very hot. Uh, but we got to handle that. In our second ball game's at noon. It could be hot at 7.30 on September 26th. But we really uh, came out with as much energy and juice as we've had throughout the entire camp. We really challenged our guys about that. Uh, but the, our guys competed their ass off Saturday night. And it was a beautiful night. williams Price had been a great night to kick off the season. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't. Uh, but uh, really a beautiful night. I, I, we had a little time. We treated everything like game day. We had a pregame meal at 3.30. We went through all the pregame routine, especially for our young players. Uh, but I was able to walk through the Spurs Up 2001 Club, and uh, I want to compliment uh, Contract Construction, Coach Tanner, our administration, and the job. It's a first-class facility. I went in the Cockaboos Club uh, down where the old weight room is. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, you know, venue for our fan base uh, to continue to enjoy the best game day atmosphere in the country. I went to the, our new recruiting area, which is where the old meeting rooms are. Uh, I've done a fantastic job there. And then on the east side where the pavilion sits out, the chair back seating where the old red seats were now are gray seats, and then the club seating and then be able to walk in underneath. It's uh, it's going to really enhance the game day atmosphere at williams Bryce Stadium. And uh, uh, again, a compliment our administration and the job they've done. But we had a great night in the stadium. We had about 140 live scrimmage snaps, which was awesome. Um, our guys really got after it. I thought they competed. We had about 20 live uh, special teams snaps, kickoff, kickoff, return, punt, punt, block, uh, field goal, PAT, but a lot of situation works. We had about 160 snaps coming out of the scrimmage. I think Trey Jones rolled his ankle a little bit. I think he should be fine, uh, but that's it. And so uh, a lot of really good competition and competitive work done. Uh, a lot of improvement needed uh, as we went back and watched the tape today and last night as a staff. Uh, but if we continue to work the way we work Saturday night, uh, we'll be on the verge of some really good things. Uh, but again, I challenged our team when the when the scrimmage was over. Now we're going to have our meetings on Monday, our walkthrough, our normal Tuesday, a normal Wednesday, a normal Thursday meeting on Friday, and we'll be back in Williams Bryce at uh, at noon. And uh, and I hope it's hot because aren't we got to battle that? We got to get mentally tougher as a football team uh, to battle through. Um, you know, the, the mental fatigue. You know, my father used to always tell me, don't let anything out of heart whip you. And fatigue, humidity, heat, rain, snow, none of that has a heart. And another man may whip my ass, but but uh, but the other stuff doesn't. So our guys got to get mentally tougher as a football team. Offensively, which conversely, defensively, anything we did well offensively is an issue defensively. So we, we took care of the football. We had 160 scrimmage snaps. There were balls on the ground one time which is one too many, but we really took care of the football. Uh, that, that was pleasing. We had a lot of explosive plays. Uh, you know, really, I go back to our first scrimmage in the, in the red zone and uh, the, the third down period, situationally, defensively, we did very well. But in the move of the ball periods, offensively, we hit some plays. And I think it's, you know, a, really a credit to our guys and what they were doing. We were better in the red zone. We were better in some end-of-game situations than we've been. Uh, but too many negative plays on first and 10. I believe five different times we started first and 15 because of a procedure issue. Uh, we didn't have any delay of games, but, you know, flinching on the offensive line, uh, not covering up the right guys, not having enough guys on the line. And that really contributed to us not doing very well on third down because we were behind in the down and distance a lot. Uh, and, and that was uh, – that was frustrating. But, I, but again, I, I saw a lot of improvement from scrimmage one to scrimmage two, uh, just as far as our operation offensively. Uh, coaches off, we treated it just like a game, and I was very pleased with that. Defensively, thing that strikes you is no turnovers. We had one ball on the ground. We had two, uh, two young D linemen loafing, uh, not running to the ball. They could have had the opportunity to have a recovered fumble, and uh, great teaching for them to understand you bust your ass to the football the time we had two balls tipped in the air, had opportunities on both of them to get them, and we didn't get them. Uh, so we've got to, you know, make sure we take care of those opportunities. In the first two scrimmage, we've tackled extremely well. I think we had 12 missed tackles last week in 140-something snaps, and we had eight this week in 160. So uh, very pleased with how we've played in space, uh, giving up too many explosives, 
uh, not as good in the red area in the end of game, but very good on third down. We had a lot of favorable down and distances, in my opinion, uh, to manage on third down. And then special teams, we covered about 10 punts live. Um, I thought Kai punted the ball extremely well. We did miss a pooch opportunity, which he's got to understand that. Uh, he put it about eight deep, and we need to be able to pin our opponent um, you know, inside the 10-yard line. Uh, we missed that opportunity, but I thought our protection was good. Our coverage can be better. We've got to continue to improve there. Uh, kickoff and kickoff return, the emphasis was more on our kickoff coverage. But we had two live reps. I thought it was solid fundamentally. We were, we were high with some pads, and we've got to leverage the ball a little better. Uh, but Mitch Jeter would be our kickoff guy if we played tomorrow. Uh, and Parker's had an outstanding camp, you know, kicking the football uh, when he's had his opportunities. But overall, pleased. I uh, thought we've made some strides from scrimmage one to now. Uh, and now we have really another, in essence, week of training camp uh, with a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday practice and a, another game-like situation on, on Saturday. I'll open it up for any questions. Use a little raise your hand uh, feature, and we'll get to you, David, with the first one. Hey, Will, thanks for doing this. Uh, have you picked a starting quarterback? Oh, Mike and I met today. Uh, you know, you look at last week, Ryan was the player of the day for us offensively, did an outstanding job. Uh, you know, we we had some discussion about uh, player of the day offensively, and Colin was uh, Saturday. I mean, did a really nice job. Uh, so, again, we got a great battle going on. It's making each other better, making our football team better. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we're going to let it go, go again this week and, and make a decision hopefully next week. Ben Briner. Uh Hey, Will. Uh, thank, thanks for doing this. Um, I wanted to ask, what uh, what is it about uh, Kevin Harris and Deshaun Fenwick that looks different when you watch the film compared to this time last year? What are the steps that those two have taken? Well, you know, Deshaun's a year ahead of Kevin, but, you know, as young players, there's a lot of, uh, you know, in, in high school, you're not as asked in a lot of systems. I'm not, I'm not saying all systems. You're asked to run the football. You're not asked to block. You're not asked to be much in protection as far as those things are concerned. But there's a lot more asked of you as you continue to elevate yourself in, in, in the game. And, and those guys, number one, are in better shape than they've been in. I remember Kevin last fall really struggling from, from a just physical conditioning standpoint. Deshaun, his first year, same thing. Uh, but I thought both guys improved a lot from the first scrimmage. I thought that they both made some positive runs. I thought Kevin especially made some nice cuts in the run game when we were live the whole time. So he ran through some contact and Sean did as well. Uh, but again, maturity happens in all different phases. Uh, some guys are, you know, when they step on campus from, a, you know, I always tell fr freshmen, you know, playing as a freshman has to do with ability, has to do with opportunity and has to do with maturity. So if you got to have the ability, number one, with both guys do, both guys need to have an opportunity, which I wouldn't say either guy had a lot of opportunities because of the, 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 the seniors we had in that room that were very good football players. You know, Rico just made the Dallas Cowboys. Taven Feaster still bouncing to, to, to make a team. And we had some guys, Mon Denson, that maybe were a little ahead of them. And then maturity. And both guys, you know, young players need to mature. Uh, and everybody matures at different ages. But I think both guys from scrimmage one to scrimmage two made some strides. Colin Taylor. Yeah, well, I guess, how's the tight end competition going? And is there a pecking order right now, I guess, a couple weeks into camp? You know, I think, Colin, it's going to be hard when you talk in terms of pecking order really throughout this entire situation that we're going through. You look at Tennessee yesterday, and I don't think it was all COVID-related, uh, but they had 40-something guys that don't don't that are unable to practice, which means you can't even scrimmage. And so, you know, we had discussions this past week as a staff about how when we start game week, how are we practicing? Because if you just sit, think, sit there and think you're going to go all scout team work and you're going to go 30 minutes of scout team work and your ones and you're going to get majority of the reps in your twos, and then Clint Hager is going to walk into my office on Friday and say so-and-so's down, and he's had 75 to 80 percent of the reps through the week. That can't happen. So we're going to do more crossover work where it's – our first group versus our second group offensively versus defense and, and, and other, and, and we got to have guys ready to go. Uh, you know, Nick, I thought had a pretty good scrimmage, you know, is still coming off the knee. We have limited his reps, but he's practiced every day. Uh, but I think he's done some nice things. Will Register has been very dependable in everything that we're asking him to do. Kevion Mullins adds a dimension to that position. You know, he's a guy that can really run and has really flourished himself in the passing game a little bit. Obviously there's some things that we need to tie up as far as the run game is concerned. 
Uh, you know, I, I would agree with that. Keyshawn Tony's been very solid in what he's done. Trey Kenyon and his opportunities has done a nice job that needs to become more reliable as far as assignment and those things are concerned. And Eric Shaw played about 18 snaps, I think it was, uh, and made two really nice catches and athletically shows you some things that you really want to see at the position. So he has missed some times because of his bone spurs, uh, but now he's back and, and uh, we have been really pleased with what we've seen as far as that's concerned. So we'll continue to work through it this week. Uh, do we need to start narrowing some snaps down for some guys? Probably that's going to have probably happen next week is more than it would this week uh, is concerned. Uh, but, you know, again, we've got to have all hands on deck ready to go uh, as far as those things are concerned. Hale. Yeah. I, from the sound of it on Friday, from talking to the two coordinators, I guess Jamar Brown and, and Zaquandre White were unable to, uh, to go on Saturday night. Well, Zaquandre will be back Tuesday. He has a little bit of a hamstring. He's practiced, I would say, the first eight, seven, eight practices and then has been out uh, with a little bit of a tweak of the hamstring. But he'll be back Tuesday. Uh, we were in a helmets practice with Jamar. He got rolled up on and sprained his knee a little bit. He should be fine. I don't think we'll get him back this week, but we got still three weeks before our first game. I would expect him back the week before we play Tennessee. Thank you. Mike Cuba. Well, since we don't have an opportunity to be able to see you guys practice at all, I mean, what can you tell about uh, what can you tell us about Colin and what he brings to that quarterback position? And then also, what have you seen from Ryan being able to grow from year one to year two? Oh, I've seen a lot of growth with Ryan uh, from a standpoint of, you know, asking him to do some different things uh, from being under center at times, uh, doing some different things on the line of scrimmage. Mike puts a lot on the quarterback as far as protections are concerned, as far as the run game is concerned. And I've seen tremendous improvement from Ryan. There's no doubt about that. Colin, to me, brings an element of toughness uh, because of what he's been through. He's got some mental toughness about him. I think that's very well respected through our football team. Uh, you know, obviously we've talked about his arm talent and he's got, uh, you know, he's got a really good arm talent as does Ryan, you know, they both throw the ball extremely well, but I think, you know, obviously, you know, Collins, uh, understanding of the system, uh, because he's been in it for now for three years, uh, shows up a lot. And as far as his experience is concerned, Josh Kendall. Well, Mike said Friday that he thinks some of the game's fundamentals have been lost because offenses get away. Fast-paced offense, no whole offenses kind of get away with stuff. And he was bemoaning that a little bit. First off, do you agree? I think, uh, so tell me again. I didn't hear that. Mike was saying some of the fundamentals of offensive football specifically, but defensive too, blocking, route running, tackling have suffered because no huddle offenses have kind of allowed offenses to get away with just catching people off guard. Do you agree? Well, I don't think there's any question. You when talk in terms of getting cheap yardage uh, in a game and you're playing fast and that's a, that's the advantage. I think in the last, I would even say two to three, three to four years, that tempo offenses don't have that as much of advantage. In my opinion, especially in our league, the officials have slowed the game down a little bit to administer the game better, to protect the integrity of the game better. But I also think that uh, defenses have caught up to being able to play faster and communicate better than probably ever before. Uh, so I think that, again, it's like anything else in life. The more you see a, 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 a scheme of offensive set, a run game, a protection, a route concept, the more you continue to see those things, the easier they become to defend uh, defensively. No different on offense. The more you see bare front, the more you see an under front, an over front, whatever the case may be, those are things you become accustomed to seeing. And, and you know, that's some things that's different for us defensively of what we're facing in training camp now than maybe we have in previous years is, you know, a motion, a shift, a uh, double shift from a tight end, change of strength motion, which may not make any sense to anybody I'm talking to right now. But for a football coach, it pre presents a lot of issues. And right. it presents a lot of issues defensively for a player that's never had to manage that before. Um, and then accompanying that with tempo involved with it, uh, you know, creates some issues for you. How much of Mike having sort of an old school background drew you to him and, and that, that grounding, that foundation? I don't, I wouldn't say old school background. I'd say new school background. Maybe yeah, a he guy looks pretty old. He looks that, pretty well, old to me. That's you. Well, y'all look very similar. I know. That. I know. That's why I don't put my picture up here. <laughs> 
No, but I think that Mike, you know, just watching uh, what he did at Colorado State, uh, obviously his success at Georgia speaks for itself and what he did there and, and, the, and the stats speak for themselves. Uh, but uh, again, what he did at Colorado State uh, and then just, just overall knowledge and vast knowledge of the game is his experience and experience, especially coaching the quarterback position. Thank you. John Whittle. Uh, what would you attribute the uh, the good tackling to at, at this point? Um, well, John, that's, that's kind of what I said. Uh, I wish we'd be making more guys miss in space offensively. <laughs> Call it like it is, and running through more contact, breaking tackles. We, you know, and, and, and we'd have done that at times. So I'm not I'm not minimizing that, but we always do tackling drills. We've done probably I would say more not to the ground, but thud stay up tackling good on good drills uh, than we have before. Uh, purposely, I didn't think we tackled very well last year, uh, consistently well. Uh, so we've done more of those things as far as leveraging the ball and tackling in, in situations, <coughs> excuse me, than we've done in the past. And so maybe that's, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. I'm good. I've been tested. I'm good. All right. But, uh, We've, we've done more good on good tackling, John, so I would probably credit that. That's something we talked about as a defensive staff today and continuing to do those things in our Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday practice and preparation for Saturday. So, I, you know, I think it's twofold. Um, you know, I think that we've maybe spent a little more time going good on good tackling and not just necessarily going through a tackle circuit, which we always do, uh, because that's, you know, iron sharpens iron. You get better when you're tackling people in space. And is, is there anybody offensively who's who's stuck out that has been able to make people miss? Well, Shai's been a guy that's been that's been elusive in space, has done a nice job. He's got to continue to utilize and trust his speed on some on some uh, some perimeter plays on, on the edges. Uh, you know, Rashad Amos is a very difficult guy. He's got a big lower body, all right, and so he really moves the pile well. He had a really nice run the other night. Uh, where he ran through about four tackles on one play, which I guess half of our tackles were missed on that one play. Uh, but he ran through contact extremely well. Kevin Harris has run through contact well. Uh, so, again, th those would be the guys who would jump out at me right off the top. Dick Cox. After two scrimmages, is there any phase of the game right now that you may have concerns about or may not be exactly where you'd want it to be? Well, I think protection-wise, and, and again, I think a little bit it was because of some third-down situations that we were in that, you know, our quarterbacks aren't live, uh, but we we had gotten the quarterback hit a couple times Saturday. Uh, so that's concerning. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, we need to get Ernest Jones back on the field at linebacker. Uh, that, that position concerns you. Um, he has been... Uh, working out with his pads. We've been moving him around. He's had no contact. He will start back on the 10th, which I believe is Thursday, uh, as far as full-time practice with us is concerned. Uh, so he has been moving around. We do think he's in decent shape. Uh, we need to do that, but there's some obvious concerns there. Um, so, again, those would be the two uh, things that kind of jumped out. You know, I thought we improved our run defense um, in some spots on Saturday as opposed to our first scrimmage. Uh, you're always nervous with a, a new specialist. You know, Kai's a freshman, although he's punted well since he's been here. Uh, we, we, there's some concerns. But, yeah, I, I would say there's concerns across the board. Those are the ones that I'm just off the top of my head from watching Saturday's scrimmage that concern me. David? Concerns me. Will, uh, have you guys submitted that waiver for Jalen yet? And if so, if, if not, why not? We have, and I, we have not heard anything back. Also, um, I believe you guys got an extra scholarship. Have you awarded that to maybe one of the walk-ons, anything like that? I have not. Ben? Uh, hey, Will. Um, I think it was on your call-in show you mentioned uh, Ryan having uh, produced a number of explosive plays back in the first scrimmage. Uh, was that something that continued into this scrimmage? And, and what about his game has sort of a, a allowed him to produce those in these situations? Well, again, Mike does a really good job of creating one-on-one -on -one matchups down the field, and um, and Ryan made nice throws. I mean, at the end of the day, and then you got to have some guys from the receiver position, which we have had, that have made nice nice plays in 50-50 balls and been able to go and, and win the battles of the, on the 50-50 balls. So that's where a lot of those have showed up. We did have a busted coverage, I want to say, two weeks ago. We didn't take the wheel route uh, from the backfield. 
Uh, but it, again, you got to be able to throw and catch, and we were able to do in that situation, which created one of the explosives. Colin? Well, you, you mentioned Jordan Rhodes obviously coming back and opting back in. I guess what's the timeline in terms of getting him back into practice, and what do you kind of envision his role being this year? We've, we have uh, really spent this entire past week total physical conditioning, change of direction, lifting. Uh, he, will, he will practice on Tuesday for probably half of the practice, and I would envision him doing about half of the practice for another week. Uh, but, you know, we continue to, to move in. Jordan's a bright guy. He can learn. He'll be fine. He's played the guard position. He's started for us. Uh, so he's got experience. It's not like he's a player that's never played before. Uh, so he's a guy that's got experience doing it, and uh, he's in every meeting. Uh, and so, uh, you know, my, ex my expectation of him to go compete to play. Mike Cuba. Well, um, I know this, this whole training camp is spread out a little bit more in comparison to years past. Is it common for you guys, number one, to have a third scrimmage? Well, we will. You know, again, we, we haven't talked in terms of how that, that'll be structured. I don't know that we're going to go 160 live scrimmage snaps again. Uh, we do need to get on and have some sustained drives on both sides of the ball in offense and defense so our guys can get used to playing an 8, 10, 12 play drive and sustaining through that. Um, but but we'll, we'll look at Saturday uh, probably after Wednesday's practice to see the things that we feel like and I feel like that we need to work on um, in all three phases. So uh, there will be some scrimmage snaps, um, you know, uh, on Saturday to how much I don't know. Yeah, the reason I asked that, and it seems like you kind of answered it, but it seems like you're, you're going to figure out uh, in terms of what players might play on Saturday. It might be one of those things, kind of like a, I don't know, a fourth uh, preseason game for the NFL, if you had to try to make a comparison. I think that would be correct. I do think that there are some things that we know, um, you know, as a team right now that we really need to work on, and that may not uh, project to be in a scrimmage format. Uh, some different things situationally that we need to look at before we start our preparation for our first game. Uh, so we'll continue to, to work through those things this week and then and then see how we structure Saturday. But I was pleased with what we were able to accomplish Saturday night. Ben? Uh, what's the status of your offensive tackle spot? And, and, and if you've done any shuffling there, what was kind of the, the thought process behind it? Yeah, we have. We've moved some guys around, uh, you know, oh, I, I, you know, right now I would be hesitant to say a starting unit. Uh, be honest with you, we've looked at Dylan Warner at both right tackle and left tackle. He is certainly more than capable of playing both. We've looked at Jasden, obviously, at the left tackle position. Jalen Nichols and Ja'Kai Moore at the right tackle. Vershawn Lee has been a guy that's rotated in with that and would probably be our what, fifth tackle uh, at this time. But those are the, those are the guys that uh, we're looking at, and, and we need more consistency at that position uh, with those guys. Colin? Yeah, well, I guess Mike talked in one of his availabilities about figuring out what you're going to kind of major in offensively, what kind of the bread and butter of it's going to be. Are you any closer to kind of figuring out that identity? And, and if so, where do you kind of see it falling right now? Well, I, I think, you know, looking at personnel groupings is still uh, working itself out uh, at the receiver position, at the tight end position. Uh, you know, Adam Prentice is going to be a really good fullback for us. There'll be some traditional two-back, which he also uh, can play in a wing situation like you would see as a tight end uh, would be concerned. Uh, but trying to, you know, get the right reps for these tight ends is going to be critical through this next week as we continue to evolve and, and look at that. And I think that uh, at the receiver position, the same same manner. So we have narrowed some things down, but I would not say that we've made some huge, uh, you know, answers right now as far as what we're doing. I think he feels good, uh, you know, coming out of last night with the receiver position, something we talked about today. We've got to continue to – it's hard sometimes, Colin, when you're installing an offense or a defense and you're trying to install base concepts within what you do and knowing that you're not going to ask a player to do this on this play or this in this defense, but in order to install the concept, you got to get it installed, but you're sitting there going, I'm never going to put this guy in this situation, if that makes sense what I'm trying to say. But we got to get things installed and get it exposed to the players uh, because it may be something from an offensive line standpoint that we, we must work on, uh, but maybe we're going to not going to ever ask this tight end to do, you know, what we would be asking him to do in a scrimmage situation. 
And that's where it's tough sometimes because you you get yourself in a really bad matchup either on offense or defense based on trying to just to get a look at the play, to get a look at the defense. And it's really from a coordinator standpoint or a head coach's standpoint, you're just trying to get a look at the play or you're getting a look at the defense and you're just trying to get it repped and, and to expose it to nine other guys knowing that there's two guys that are not going to be in that position come September 26 or shouldn't be. So, again, I, I think that we're still working through that a little bit. Harold? You always talk about wanting to play the best five or six guys, whatever the number is, in the secondary. Do you feel like you're close to having having a feel for, for what that might look like? Well, I think, you know, Saturday night was a big night for Cam and John Dixon, and I thought both guys at times did some nice things, and there's some things we need to improve on. Uh, so we put those guys in a lot of situations where – uh, they they had some opportunities to make plays and they did some things well and there's some again like I said before there's things some, some things we need to improve on obviously J C and Israel uh, are pl really playing well Jamie Robinson played extremely well Saturday night R J S had a solid camp uh, has continued to improve throughout camp uh, you know as far as you would say those four I thought Shiloh Sanders had one of his better uh, practices Saturday night his effort on special teams was outstanding his effort on defense was outstanding we had to clean some things up but. Uh, again, continues to to, to produce. Uh, Jalen Dickerson's done some nice things. We got to continue to get him healthy a little bit. Had a little bit of a hamstring the last couple of days, but we're getting back probably Tuesday. Uh, uh, and then John and Cam and Joey Hunter is a young player. Uh, I thought came on and did some nice things. So Donald Fortune has moved back and forth from corner to safety. Uh, had some runs come out on him and made a tackle on every every single tackle in the open field. Stuck his face in the fan and and uh, and really really fit. We're just watching that. So, I, again, I think that uh, just seeing the guys continue to develop, Darius Rush is a guy that's done a night, really nice job as a missile on punt for us, can really run on the top end. He registers over 20 miles an hour every time uh, we practice when he's on the catapult system, uh, but a guy that uh, certainly can help us at the corner position. So we're, we're continuing to look, work through that. Who will be the nickel? Who's at safety? Who moves inside? Who stays at corner? Those are all things we're still working through as we continue to work through those combinations. John Whittle. Well, I, I think you mentioned uh, a minute ago that you were encouraged by the wide receivers, and, and you you mentioned explosive plays. Have, have their performance as a group surprised you at all? Because I, I, th I think there were some question marks about that position going into camp. Yeah, well, I, I agree with you 100%. You know, I think that uh, Shy's been a guy that had a, a couple big plays the other night. Uh, a couple really nice catches down the field, you know, 50-50 contested catches. Uh, you know, Xavier uh, had a huge reception in what we called an overtime situation, the third overtime where you had to go for two uh, on, on an RPO across the middle. Made a really nice play on the ball going across the middle, knowing he's going to get hit, got smacked pretty good and was able to stumble into the end zone. Uh, was was a big play for us. Jalen Brooks has made some plays for us. Uh, been Been pleased with that. Rico Powers. I mean, people say, well, who's your first three? I wouldn't say that he would not be in our first three right now. There's been a freshman that's really come on. Shikari Caldwell uh, has improved from practice one to practice uh, 13, I guess it was, Saturday, uh, tremendously. I had a really good night Saturday night uh, there in the stadium, made some contested catches, uh, thought thought he did some really good good things. To carry on continues to come on for us. Luke is still playing quarterback. Uh, primarily at the time, but also playing some at the receiver position. Uh, that met, caught a nice screen for about a 20-yard gain uh, that, that I remember. So, again, I think that that's a position that has continued to come on for us, um, and, and we need to continue for those guys to keep coming. Ben? Uh, Will, two, two questions. F first of all, uh, how often are you guys testing uh, right now, and when do you go to uh, three tests? Well, we go to three tests during the season, and okay. that'll be prior, the Sunday prior to Tennessee. Uh, we are testing one time the entire building on every Monday, which will be tomorrow again. And uh, any time any player or staff member has any symptoms as they enter the building, we test them. Okay. And, and when you saw, I guess, what was your reaction when you saw that news out of Tennessee with kind of what happened to them and – just seeing that and seeing how well you guys have done sort of confirm the way that you've been going about this. I want everybody to knock on wood right there. You <laughs> Sorry about totally, that. Totally jinx us. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the world we're in right now and, and you can be careful. 
I, I know people that I know for a fact, I just know them as people that have been extremely careful and have contract, contracted the virus. It's very contagious. And so uh, it's, it's, it's an eye opener. It's why we, we've spent as much time as we spend talking about how, how we're going to practice during the season. All right, because they can walk in on a Friday and say so and so's down and so and so's down, and it's not necessarily the positives of the test. I mean, you look at our situation; we had four positives last week. We've had twelve down. It's not just the contact; it's not just the positives. It's there's a contact tracing involved with that, and and so that's what's eye opening, alarming a little bit to me. Um, but again, we're going to do what's safe for our student athletes, and uh, I don't think that they were all COVID related there. But it's uh, that's part of the world that we're in right now. And, you know, I, th I saw a, a comment by a, 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 maybe a broadcaster or a coach. Somebody this weekend says, boy, there's been some sloppy football. Well, yeah. You take a guy that's taking 80% of the reps at a position, and then you tell me on a Friday he can't travel to the game and play, and then you're taking a, maybe a second team or maybe their roommates. He's contact tracer. You're moving a guy from another position to this position so you can play and you can be able to <laughs> – I mean, that's that's the reality that we're in right now. That's part of it. Colin? Well, you talked about Jamar, obviously, taking some reps at dime linebacker for the people that maybe aren't so smart at football to understand what dime linebacker fully is. I guess, what are the things in his skill set that really translates to it, and what are you kind of asking him to do in that spot? Well, we went into – to uh, fall camp, well, actually, I, I would say probably go back to in July, just looking at our roster and seeing a guy that has a really big upside as a player, in our opinion, um, has box instincts so he can play in the box. He can play from tackle to tackle. He has really good run instincts, uh, really good run pass instincts to key and diagnose, to play run, play pass, when you need to, when you don't need to. Uh, and, and as we continue to work, you know, I was like, this guy can be a really good dime for us because he's a guy that can play in space, he can cover in man coverage, and he can play in the box. So now he's a guy that can slide out of the box. So let's go ahead and put him in the defensive back room and teach more of the techniques and fundamentals in that room. And it, I guess what I would say a little bit more of a maybe AP linebacker, advanced placement linebacker, as I say. But to, to let him learn a little bit more of that side of our defense. And then as you got him in the back end, you saw the guy can play in the middle of the field. He can play a half safety. He can play a quarter safety. And, and we knew he could play down in the box. So he's just added value to him as a player. And then being able to do some of the things he's done at linebacker that he's already showed us he could do and then be able to play man coverage. And then now you're able to disguise things so much better when you have a guy that can cover, that can slide out of the box, can slide in the middle of the field, can do some different things. And we always really haven't had that depth really since we've been here, to be able to have that kind of guy. We've had that kind of guy. I mean, RJ can do those things as well, but we get a little thin in the secondary about putting the quality player on the field that we want to have. So, you know, he has a, a really good skill set for that. John Whittle. Two questions for you. What, what does it look like at center for you guys right now? Eric, Eric Douglas is our starter. Uh, and right now, Vinny Murphy and uh, and Hank Manos are battling for the for the for the uh, backup position, but I think Eric's right now really positioned himself from a leadership standpoint, from a, uh, getting us in and out of the right calls, John. Uh, but but has had a really solid camp for us. Uh, you know, Vershawn Lee's a guy that we're going to look at a little bit this week and see what he can do there. Uh, but but uh, that's where we are. And also, this is a little bit off topic. I'm not sure how much you know off the top of your head, but. Uh, the, the Feed Our Heroes program that you started back in, in March or April, how, how is that coming along? Is that something you're still pretty actively involved with even as, as we've gotten deeper into this pandemic? Yeah, we have. It's still still working well. I got an email on it uh, from Joe Walker, who really has been the legs behind the whole thing. Carol and I were talking one night and, and, and wanted to do something to help uh, the people that are truly on the front line, and that's our doctors, nurses, medical uh, care people that are that are taking care of, of uh, people that are being uh, with this virus with COVID. So, uh, but Joe Walker's really run with it, and uh, but it's it's still up and running and doing well. Hale, uh, you mentioned Rico obviously making the Cowboys a little while ago, but you know TJ and Joe Charlton making their respective teams. You had a chance to talk to any of those guys who were were fighting for roster spots, and what's it like for you seeing guys like that or you know undrafted and 
being able to make a 53 man like that? Well, I think it was a, it's a, it was a very difficult time for those guys from a standpoint of they never had a pro day. They really never had anybody. And, and those guys were all guys to me. When you meet T.J. Brunson, he's going to impress you. He's going to impress you with his football intelligence and the type of person he is. I text back and forth with T.J. Uh, you, you meet Joe. Uh, you know, Joe, I couldn't believe Joe didn't get into a camp originally. I was shocked. I mean, this guy's one of the best punters I've ever been around. Uh, but, you know, Joe, I knew Joe would make a team if he could get in front of somebody. And I've texted back and forth with Joe. I texted back and forth with Rico. Uh, Leslie's mom called the other night. Matter of fact, I need to call her. I'm glad you said that. Um, and then uh, text back and forth with Javon and Brian the other day. And, uh, you know, Brian got his name on the stadium. Uh, I text back and forth with Michelle's mama. Uh, to congratulate them, we're going to take some pictures and put a nice picture together for them uh, there. And uh, to talk to, I text back and forth with Debo. I think he's going to be up uh, week one. Uh, if I, if I, he, he felt pretty good about where he was with those things. So, uh, you know, proud of those guys. I talked to Dylan. Um, I asked him about uh, Dennis uh, periodically. So they're all doing well. Proud of those guys. Taylor Stallworth made the Colts 53-man roster. So, Ben Brenner. I guess what does what a guy like Adam Prentice, what does having a player like that allow you to do differently scheme wise in the run game? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I've got Dan Quinn being one of them. Several people in the NFL call me every single year after our season and says, you know, we really want to be some form of a two back team, uh, somebody that has value on special teams, but someone that can be a lead blocker. And they're very difficult to find because generally if they're that body type and they're a good athlete, they're probably playing linebacker mm -hmm. based on where they are now. You know, in high school, they might be rushing the passer or they might be the feature back. And any feature back does not see himself ever as a fullback. I mean, that, that, that just never happens. <laughs> so it's a very hard position to find. It's kind of like tied in right now. You either have guys that can stretch the field and will not block anybody or you got a slug who can block at the point of attack but can't beat me in coverage. So it's just it's just hard. It's hard to find guys. So uh, hard to find guys like him. He obviously knows the system. Uh, he's very well versed in what we do and how we do things. Uh, but he's also going to be a big special teams contributor for us uh, as well as a fullback. But we, it's just hard to find that. And when you don't have that guy, now you, now you start figuring in a two-back run game which is totally different from a one-back run game, especially if you have players. And a lot of times you're projecting at linebackers the other part position to find because generally the guys that have length and have athleticism are rushing the edges. They're putting those guys on the edges, let them rush the edges. So you're always projecting to see if a guy can play. And to keying diagnose a one-back run versus a two-back run is a thousand percent different. Yeah. So with all that being said, it's a hard guy to find. All right, the last question tonight actually comes uh, from Phil Kornblut, but Phil unable to ask the question himself, so he texts me to ask Coach. Well, why um, can't he? He just plays at the Masters he, last he, week. Well, he's at Darlington this week, and yeah. so I don't know if the, the cars are too loud or what. I don't know. Big uh, time, man. He's big time. Uh, he wants to know um, your view on these recruiting visits organized by the recruits. Do you think it's <laughs> kosher, and if so, will you do it? Absolutely no comment. All right. I'll get in trouble if I commented on that one. But I'm going to put my Under Armour mask back on. Under Armour. You can order them. All right. And that is a wrap. Thanks, I appreciate Thank everybody you. joining us on a Sunday night. Thanks, Will. Thanks.